Abraham is our theme this morning, is our is the person that we're looking at. I find that Abraham is an interesting character in the scripture. He's a, I find that Abraham is a faithful man. He's very faithful, he's very uh, trusting, he's, he's willing to go and do things. He's, he's really a hero um, that I think is worthwhile talking about this morning. And his story uh, goes, begins back in chapter 12 of Genesis. We're going to be looking at chapter 22, but in chapter, back to chapter 12, we see that God calls him to follow him, to take his family, all his possessions, and go to the land that he's going to show him. The story is very interesting, but, but where I want us to pick up this morning is an interesting part of the story. It's back where um, we find uh, an amazing story of faithfulness. But uh, let's get a little background first. First, we want to know that Abraham and his wife were, were as I said, very faithful. They, they heard God's call and they picked up, they moved to a new land, which is a pretty intense thing to do. And some of you have experienced that. Those that have moved to Canada or gone to some other place around the world where they just moved and picked up, you don't know anybody, you never, you're not, you're, you know, it's, it's not an easy thing to do, is it? You don't know what to expect um, for those who have come from a warmer climate and in this is your first winter, you're going to experience something very different than what you've ever experienced. I think Ben, as you think about that, just wait another month, this is, this is you'll be going, I can't wait until it's minus five. <laughs> right? And you, you, you can reassure him too. And anybody else that, that, uh, that you know that's uh, new, you, you know, that's never been through one of our winters, it's going to be an interesting thing. Well, Abraham and Sarah had a similar idea. They don't know where they're going. They didn't know anything about the new land they were going to. But they were faithful to God and they trusted Him and they moved on. They were success successful where they were. They had many possessions. They had many uh, uh, different kinds of uh, animals and all kinds of things. They, so they, but they knew that God had a different plan for their lives and they were willing to do this. So they moved and like any man and wife, they desire also to have a, a family. But Sarah was unable to have children. And that was pretty devastating to them. They weren't, so they weren't able to have a, uh, an heir to the family. They weren't able to have somebody to pass their name on to and someone to, to, move, uh, to move the family forward. But um, if you turn with me to chapter 15 of, of Genesis, verses 1 through 6, we see that God promises, uh, makes a promise to Abraham. And uh, it's an interesting promise. And it says, After these events, the word, word of the Lord came to Abram, which was before he changed his name after he changed it to Abraham. In a vision, it says, Don't be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your reward, and it will be very, and, um, or your reward will be very great. But Abraham said, Lord God, what can you give me since I am childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus? Abraham, Abram continued, Look, you have given me no offer and offspring, so a slave is born in my house will be my heir. Now the word of the Lord came to him, this one will, be, uh, will not be your heir. Instead, one who comes from your own body will be your heir. He looked he, from he took him outside and said, look at the sky and count the stars. If you're able to count them, uh, then he said to him, your offspring will be at that numerous. Abraham believed of the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. So in other words, God said, even though you're not, you're not able to have children yet, I'm going to make sure that you take, you have children, and your heirs are going to be so numerous that it's going to be more than numbers, that more than the stars in the sky. And Abraham was like, well, you know, that's interesting. I think it's kind of interesting that we don't see Abraham questioning God. We don't see Abraham wondering if this is possible. He just says, okay, if that's what God says, that's what it looks going to happen. We go on to chapter 17 of, of Genesis, verses 15 through 19. We hear, we hear again what God promises to Abraham. It says there, Abraham fell to the ground, laughed, and thought in his heart, Can a child be born to a hundred-year-old man? Can Sarah, a ninety-year-old woman, be, give birth? Now, that's a pretty reasonable question, don't you think? Um, if you think of your grandparents, and most of your grandparents probably aren't a hundred or ninety years old, can you imagine them having grand or having children? I think my mom and dad, who are 75 and 70, uh, 72, and I think, how is it? Can you imagine them having children? My mom couldn't even keep up with a baby, let alone take care of her, uh, him or her. 
And my dad would be, I know my dad's patience wouldn't be possible. So, it goes on. So Abraham said to God, if only Ishmael could, could, have, uh, could live in your presence. But God said, no, your wife Sarah will bear you a son, and you will name him Isaac. And I will confirm my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his offspring, for his offspring after him. Now, interestingly enough, the name Isaac. God names this child Isaac. And anybody know, if you know a person named Isaac, you know their name has an interesting meaning. And it means laughter. Now, it's, it's, it's appropriate that God says, you're going to call him laughter. Because you, you Sarah actually, when, when Abraham goes to Sarah and says, you're going to have a child, Abraham, uh, Sarah laughs. And, said, and, uh, and God actually challenges her. So Abraham is, is making, the, tells a story and uh, tells his wife that you're going to have a child. And, she's, and, and she said, well, I've been married for so many years. How am I going to be able to have a child? And so eventually the time comes. And Isaac, which means laughter, is born. And Abraham and Sarah become proud parents at a very, very old age. Which brings us to the chapter I want us to focus on this morning. Genesis chapter 22. Before we begin there, let's begin with the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I do thank you for this opportunity we have to enter into your house this morning and to worship you. Lord, through song and through prayer and through hearing of your word, through the giving of our offerings, we have come into work here to worship you. Now, Lord, I pray your Holy Spirit's anointing upon my, on myself and each person here, that our ears would be open to your message. That the words that we hear would be words that you have for us this morning. Lord, may we take it to heart. May we be willing to receive it and to take action on it. And we pray for these things in your son's precious name. Amen. Now, in chapter 22, we come to a point. Abraham has one son. Only one son. No other children. And we have a time where God challenges Abraham. And it's, it's prefaced in each thing, I think, I found three interesting times in this section of scripture that Abraham says, here I am. Here I am. And I want us to begin in verse 1 through 6, and where we say, Abraham says, here I am. And what I believe he's saying is, here I am, I will follow you. And we begin in verse 1, it says, after these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. So listen to here. God tested him. Here I am, he answered. Take your son, he said. Your only son, Isaac, whom you love. Go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains I will tell you, tell you about. So, early in the morning, Abraham got up, saddled his donkey, and took him with took him and two of his young men and his son Isaac. He split wood for a burnt offering and set it out to go to the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Then Abraham said to his young man, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there to worship. Then we'll come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it on his Son, on his son Isaac. In his hands he took the fire and the sacrificial knife, and the two of them walked on together. Here I am. I'll follow you. Can you even imagine the picture? The request. Can you imagine God coming to you and saying to you, Here's, Here I have a test for you. I want, he didn't say, I have a test for you. He said, Here I want, I have a test for you. I want you to follow me and do exactly as I said without any question. And Abraham's response, here I am, I will follow. I'll follow you and I'll do what you, exactly what you want because, because I trust you. Here, here he goes and he takes, um, he, he hears God's command to him and he says that and he takes his son and he's, he's willing to do something even unimaginable. Sacrifice his own son. So he takes two young men and, they, and, and his son and they split wood. And I'm not exactly sure how old Isaac is at this point. But I can tell you right now that if God came to me and 
and said, Dennis, I have a task for you. Take your stuff and take it to the mountain. I'm going to show you and sacrifice you. I'm not sure I can say, here I am. I'll follow. But this faithful man, Abraham, says, here I am. Here I am, Lord. I will do whatever you ask of me. I'll do whatever you call on me to do. I'll follow. He even goes as far, and you know, he says in, in, up in around verse 5 here, he says, he tells the two men, you stay here, the boy and I'll go over to there to worship. Then, listen to him, we'll come back. He still has faith in God, that God is going to have something in store here. That surely God is not, God has something different than maybe possibly what is, what is said. So then he's saying, we'll come back. And Abraham took the wood of the, for the burnt offering, laid it on his son. It's, so Isaac is carrying the wood that is going to be what, what is for his sacrifice, him to be sacrificed. What faithfulness. What a trusting man. And then we go on in the section of Scripture. And beginning in verse 7, verse 7 through 10, we hear this. It says, Then Isaac spoke to his father, Abraham, and said, My father. And he replied, Abraham replied, Here I am, my son. Isaac said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. Then the two of, us, of them walked on together. When they arrived at the place that God had told them about, Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood. And he bound his son Isaac and placed him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. Here I am. I will trust you and obey you. I will trust you and obey you, Lord. I'm going to go even, I'm going to take this next step. I don't know what exactly it is that you're going to do. And, and, and Isaac calls out to his dad and says, Dad, where's the, where's the lamb? Where's the lamb we're going to slaughter? What, what, what are we going to use? But listen to, curiously, listen to Abraham's response. I think Abraham, in his wisdom, in his understanding, his faithfulness to God, really truly, truly trusts that God had a different plan, that, that God knew what he was doing, and God knew, knew, knew something was, uh, he knew that God would do something amazing. As Abraham answered in verse 8, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering. Can you think, think about something that God is asking you to do? Is God asking you to do something that you think is just impossible? Is God asking you to do something that you think is, is totally out of, the, out of the ordinary, out of His character? How are you responding? Is God calling you to go somewhere? Is God calling you to, to respond in a way that you never thought possibly you could respond? Is God asking you to do something that to, is going to cause you to sacrifice something very personal to your own self. To give up something. To go somewhere. To be someone. Have you answered the call? Are you willing to say, here I am, I'll follow. Here I am, I'll trust you and obey. And here I am, Lord, I'm going to do it. Is, even, if, even if it seems like it's not, if it's impossible, it seems like I'm... It's, it's something that I shouldn't even be doing. I'm going to trust you, Lord, because I know that you'll provide a way, that you'll provide the answer, that you'll provide what is needed in order for me to do what you're calling me to do. Can you picture this? Can you see? You know, I, I often thought, oh, this is not this. I, I, I heard this story as a young man or as a young boy. I thought, oh, this is not that big a deal. But then I say, as you have children or if you have a son or a daughter, it doesn't matter. God says, you let him go, you let him do whatever I call him to do, it's hard to even do that. And here we see Abraham willing to trust God, because he trusts God enough to know that God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering. And we go on to verse 3, or the third point here, uh, in verse 11 and through 14, it says, but the angel of the Lord called him. So remember, Abraham is 
taken that, reached out, and he's taken the knife, he has the knife ready to, to, to perform the task. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he replied, Here I am. Then he said, Do not lay a hand on the boy or do anything to him. For, I, for now I know you are you fear God. And since you, have, since you have not withheld your only son from me, Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in the by the by its, its horns in the thicket. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it as a burnt offering in the place in place of his son. And Abraham named the place the Lord will provide. So that so today it is, it is said, it, it will be provided on the Lord's mountain. Here I am, I will praise you. Abraham, Abraham, stop, don't you, you don't need to go any further. I know that you'll, you'll go where I have called you to. Abraham, stop, don't lay a hand on your son. Here I will provide for you as I have as always provided for you. Abraham then turns and he worships God and he says, God, I knew that you provide. I'll this, from this day forward, this place will be called the Lord will provide. So today it, it is, it says. It will, be, it will provide on the Lord's mountain. If you will trust God, if you will trust God and go wherever he calls you to, go wherever he's asked you to go to, do whatever he's called you to do, to, do, to be whoever He's asked you to be. If God is saying, I need a, a Sunday school teacher, will you, will you step forward and be that Sunday school teacher? Or is God calling you to say, I, I need you to be a, a, a preacher? Will you be that one who says, yeah, I can do that. I know there's, it's not a place where I'm going to get rich. It's not a place where I'm going to get famous. It's not a place where I'm going to get a lot of recognition. But if you call me to it, I know that you'll provide for me and if, if I'll be faithful for it and follow me. Here I am. God needs so many of us who are willing just to, to proclaim and say, Here I am, Lord, I'll do whatever you call me to do. Maybe it's to help with little children in our, in our congregation. Time is coming that we need help in our congregation for with the children. Parents can't do it all themselves all the time. It's a challenge. Today, this week, we have a new one. I don't know if you realize that we have a new baby in our congregation. God has provided for us a new child for us to be caring for. His name is Caden Josiah. Born on Thursday at around, I, don't know, I think it was around 9 or 10 o'clock. 7 pounds, 1 ounces. About 20 inches long. He's a beautiful little, little young man that uh, I look forward to having sit in our congregation as well. Born to Calvin and Stella. And you know, God will provide. God, God, we need, we need people that are willing to say, Here I am, Lord. I'll go with you if it's the place to the, to the ends of the world. I'll go to you even if, it's in, if it means that I'll be uncomfortable. I'll go with you. I'll follow you. I'll trust and obey you. And I'll go and take that step of faith. And even if I have a challenge that causes me to sacrifice something dear to me. We will, I'll trust you that you'll provide. We go on, and it changes a little bit in verses 15 through 18. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from, the, from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done these things and have not withheld your only son, I will indeed bless you and make your offspring as numerous as the stars of the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your offspring will possess the gates of, your enemy, of their enemies. And all the nations of the earth will be, pray, be blessed by your offspring, because you have obeyed my command. Finally, it says, it's Abraham saying, I am, here I am. And then finally we hear, I am your Lord. I will bless you. I'll bless you in such a way that, that you would never think imaginable. I'll bless you because you have followed me. I'll bless you because you have said, I'll trust you. I'll be willing. I'm willing to sacrifice whatever you ask me to sacrifice. 
And interestingly enough, if you think about it, when he says, all the nations will be blessed by your offspring because of your, you obeyed my command, who is the offspring of Abraham? Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. See, God was willing to give up his only son for us. He originally began with Abraham, saying, ask Abraham to offer his son, but he said, no, I'm not going to offer, I don't need you to do that, I just want you to trust me and follow me and be obedient to me and be willing to sacrifice, be willing to give up, be willing to go beyond what we think is possible. I want you to be a blessing to the rest of the world so I can bless them through your offspring. God wants to do something in, something the world would not understand. God wants us to follow Him blindly. In verse 8, it's, it's so awesome when we follow, when we follow God, we must remember God Himself will provide. He will, he will have an answer for you, but you must first place your faith in Him. You can't just do it halfway. You can't just do it enough. Just enough to, or it must be, it, for it must be all or nothing. God doesn't need any halfway Christians. God doesn't need any, any fringe Christians. He doesn't need Christians that are sitting on the, on the edges, waiting and watching to see what everybody else is going to do. God needs Christians that are willing to say, here I am, I'll follow you no matter what you call upon me to do. No longer do we need, to, do we need Christians that are, will, are just going to take up pew space. We need Christians that are willing to stand up for what they believe. He wants to bless you. And for him to do that, we must be, must be completely surrendered to him. If I were to ask someone to come up here and to blindfold them and ask them to sit to, to, to trust me as I led them around, I was tempted to do this this morning. I was going to do it with Madeline to see if she really trusts her dad. Like God, like us trusting God as, as His children. And if I led her around the room and I got her all disoriented and said, "Just trust me, follow me," and she and it would be great if she says, "Here I am, Dad. I'm willing to go with you no matter what." And then we go around the room and we go fall around me, and I bring her to the middle of the, of here and I say, "Hey, Madeline, I want you to sit down." Don't use your hand, don't try, don't, don't, just keep your hands on your side, keep your hands to your, you know, just to, to your, to your, to your, by your, by your chest. Just trust me. Here I am, Dad, I trust you. She says, Dad. That's what God needs from us. This is what God wants from those who follow Him. And like Abraham, you have the potential to affect so many in the world, so many in your family, so many at your workplace, so many at school, if you have full faith in God. From the faithfulness of Abraham comes the Messiah of the world. From the faithfulness of Abraham, you and I have the forgiveness of sins and a new life through the sacrifice of God's only begotten Son. So in the end, when God asked, asked of Abraham, was he what, was, what, what he himself was willing to do for you and I? Will you answer the call and will you follow even though you don't have all the answers? Will you take control over God? Will you, will he wants to, be, to bless you. He wants to show you how he desires to work in your life. Will you surrender control? Will you cry out to God here when he calls your name? Here am I. I'll follow you. I'll trust and obey you. I'll praise you. And I'll, as you provide. Will you be that one who changes the world around you? But you know, the reality is, we can't just let the rest of the world do it for us. It, I, you know, it can't be your, your pastor that's going on. It can't be your, just your Sunday school teacher. It can't be just a missionary. It can't be just your mom and dad. It has to be you. God is calling you to follow Him. It can't be just everybody else in here. He wants you. So 
What do you do? Do you cry out to him? Here I am, Lord. What do you need from me? Here I am, Lord. I'll do it all for you. It's all yours. It's not mine anymore. Abraham did this and hold. It's my only one. It's my only son. I remember what Ardell's grandma told us about, about her time during the Depression. During the dirty 30s, it was called, right? Sunday came. She had not died hardly left in her house. Didn't have enough money to buy food to feed her kids. Three children at home. Nothing left in, in the pantry. But God said to her that day, you take your tithe to the church, you bring it to me, and I will bless you. And she says, here am I. Here's, what I, here's my, my possession for it. I give them back to you. She didn't know where she was going to get food for that week. She didn't know how she could provide for her three children, let alone feed them or hold all those different positions that we all worry about. But she took her money, her tie, and laid it on the altar before God. That afternoon, the neighbors brought food to her home and said, We have extra. We thought maybe you guys would. That's how the Lord wants to bless you. Are you willing to sacrifice? Are you willing to give? Are you willing to give that full of hurt?